Welcome everybody to the WWE Roadblock Recap. Now, this event was exclusively on the WWE Network. It was not on pay-per-view. You know, they always have this, you could get your free month and all this stuff. And actually, WrestleMania this year, to new subscribers, is free. So, that's all, you know, just to get more eyes on the product, more people to subscribe to the network. Stuff like that. But this event was in Toronto, Canada. It was a pretty good event. Don't really have anything bad to say about it in the general sense. But let's just get into it here. Yeah, the New Day defending their WWE Tag Team Championships against the League of Nations. King Barrett and Sheamus. New Day comes out before you know, the match starts and stuff. You know, doing their normal banter. And they have this unveiling of the Budio's cereal box. You know, you know the New Day. They're... So, <laughs> so, Big E, he hits King Barrett with the big ending. You know, obviously, so they could retain their tag team championships. <sighs> big E's a monster, man. He really is. Unbelievable. He, he is very, very underrated. I mean, I know they're champions and stuff, but... He... If they give him a little push, I think he could really go far. We had an unannounced match with Chris Jericho and Jack Swagger. Jericho comes out and says that, you know, he was glad that he got out of the country of Canada. Just, you know, being a heel. Jericho is a pretty good heel, I think. Um, you know, saying a thing about, oh, you know, you guys chose to cheer AJ Styles over me, you... Chose AJ Styles over me. That's like his running thing now. Because obviously they... <laughs> they used to be a tag team for like... I don't know, like a week or two. And then he like already turns on them. I think they could have stretched it out a little further. I, I don't know. Whatever. Jericho picks up the victory after hitting Jack Swagger with the walls of Jericho. We had the NXT Tag Team Championship match. The Revival, the champions, Dash Wyler and Scott Dawson... Defending their titles against Enzo and Big Cass. <laughs> you know, obviously accompanied to the ring by Carmella. Those guys, you know, Enzo and Cass, they're, they're, they're cool, man. They play the, the role of being like the stereotypical New Yorkers. You know, doing all the hip-hop slang and stuff like that. But the Revival did pick up the victory after this like crazy top rope double... Team DDT kind of move on Enzo. That, that was a crazy move, man. The Revival is like a more traditional type of tag team. Um, anybody that does not watch NXT, I advise you to watch that. Even if you just watch, you know, some of those guys. They, they're really, really talented. We had the Divas Championship. Charlotte defending her title against Natalia. You know, Natalia had like a little pre-match interview earlier that day. You know, Charlotte came out and, you know, talked trash to her and stuff like that. But, we had another... Another distraction finish from Charlotte for her to retain her title. I, I'm just... I'm not impressed. I really am not impressed. <laughs> you know, obviously Natalia sees Flair on the apron. You know, she <laughs> fucking... You know, gets distracted and actually fucking, you know, hits him. And, um, you know, distracts Natalia enough for her not to notice Charlotte from behind her and stuff like that. She rolls her up, gets the victory, retains her title. Charlotte is now going to go on to WrestleMania to face Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks in a triple threat match for her Divas Championship. Brock Lesnar was originally supposed to face Luke Harper. At this event. Then they changed the billing to Brock Lesnar versus Bray Wyatt. So. When this match starts. It turns into a handicap match anyway. Obviously you know. Harper and Wyatt. Against Lesnar. Like. What is the. What is the logic. You know. You're going to book a match. Book a match. Like. What, what's the big deal. I don't really. See the big deal in this. If you're going to have them have a two-on-one, why don't you just say that from the beginning? Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand that. I really don't. <laughs> Lesnar basically decimates Harper. You know, hits him with a bunch of suplexes. 
<laughs> Harper kind of has a advantage for like a minute and a half. <laughs> Lesnar just hits him with the friggin' F5 and that's it. Bray Wyatt was not in the match officially. At the end of the match, he basically, you know, Lesnar is like practically stalking him. Stalking Bray Wyatt, you know, for him... You know, because he like didn't get in the match, and he's the one that he really wants to get his hands on and stuff like that. They're definitely gonna have to set up a match with those two at some point. Sami Zayn went up against Stardust. Sami Zayn is trying to get his way, basically on the roster. You know, the WWE main roster, like full time. So you know, matches like this definitely help him with that. But he went against Stardust. Sami Zayn did pick up the victory after he runs Stardust into the actual turnbuckle and he rolls him up for a win. Okay, now we have our WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. Triple H defending his World Heavyweight Championship against Dean Ambrose. This was a very, very good match. I don't have any complaints as far as the actual match itself. There's just one spot. Dean Ambrose actually hits Triple H with dirty deeds. The referee counts. One, two, three. Everybody goes nuts. I go nuts. I'll be the first one to tell you I went nuts. The referee calls it off because he sees that Ambrose's feet were under the bottom rope. Oh, man. That, that was a heartbreaker. It really was. They're outside the ring. Triple H gets in the ring. Then Ambrose practically almost gets counted out of the ring. Gets like a nine count. He comes back in. Triple H hits him with the pedigree. One, two, three. Three, Triple H is going to WrestleMania as scheduled to face Roman Reigns. This is the way it is. To me, it seems like it was just like a tune-up match for Triple H. Triple H is not an active competitor anymore. Everybody already knows that. So, I do not have a problem with him competing at WrestleMania. I don't think anybody really does. It's just the fact that he does not need to be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. In 2016... Whatever year it is, I mean, it, I don't think it's fair to have a part-timer as the champion. Especially if it's somebody that is, like, practically an executive of the company. Even some of those other part-timers, like Lesnar, I think he built the title up even though he was a part-timer. By him just decimating everybody and just being Brock Lesnar. But he was a competitor. He was not you know, a part of, like, the corporate branch of WWE. That's why I do not agree with it. I don't care what anybody says about it. He does not need to be the WWE champion. I do advise people to watch WWE Roadblock. It was a very, very good event as far as just, like, the action itself. The, you know, WWE World Heavyweight Championship match was very, very good considering, you know, the outcome. I hope everybody enjoys Raw coming this Monday. Uh, enjoy SmackDown, enjoy all the events, all the shows, every single thing leading up to the road to WrestleMania. Anybody going this year, it is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I hope you enjoy it. I really do. It's in Texas this year. So, that's just the way it is, man. I'm going to get the fuck out of here, and I will see you when I see you.